Well, so much for this ice season. It's been so warm up north. We don't have any snow. Luckily, we had that deep freeze for one week. Got a decent amount of ice to be able to get out on the river. So in today's video, I want to answer a few questions that I've been getting recently with the sales on some of these live scope units. And the question is, should I get the LVS32, which is the first generation live scope, or should I go with the live scope plus? So we're gonna answer some of those questions about the differences between the two of them, and maybe if you should get the older version with a bigger screen or the newer version with a smaller screen if you're trying to fit within a specific budget. First, let's talk about the original live scope, the LVS32 transducer. The LVS32 transducer is this triangle shaped transducer. I think this launched in 2018, 2019, and it's been phenomenal for a lot of people, crappie fishermen, bass fishermen. Um, it's a fantastic tool to use. Well, currently, I think there's some sales going on for $1,000. You can get the LVS32 with the GLS10 black box, which is what you need in order to run any live scope system, the LVS32 or the LVS34, the live scope plus. Um, and the question I keep getting is, should I go with the discounted, should I go with the older model, this LVS32 for about $1,000, and then spend what I would have spent on a LVS34, which retails for about $1,700, should I spend that difference on a bigger screen? One of the tests I'm gonna be doing today is I got some holes drilled out uh, about to 100 feet or so. We're gonna drop some lines in and just kind of show you the difference between clarity of the screen and I guess distance of how far this thing can actually see a lure or a fish compared to the LiveScope Plus. There's three different modes on this, same with the LiveScope Plus. There's the forward facing mode, the down view mode, and then the perspective mode. I actually have this on a mount. It just kind of loosens up and I can kind of tilt it to perspective mode if I need to. Um, and then the down mode, I can actually just loosen up the bolt here and then just shift it into down mode if I need to. So the LVS34, which is the LiveScope Plus, it's more of this rectangle shape. It seems like this has been the more efficient option for viewing further out in distance. Uh, you're gonna see here, most likely that 100 foot mark that's really pushing the limits of the LVS32, whereas the LVS34 is pretty crisp and clear at 100 feet out. Okay, so this is my first minnow. I actually added a weight to it to show up a little bit better on the screen. And then I didn't drill it exactly straight. Let's see if I can find it right here. Whoop. Right there is my, uh, my furthest out rod. It's about 50 feet close to about that 45, 50 foot mark. So this is the LVS32 transducer with the brand new Garmin Echomap 93SV UHD Gen 2 screen. So that's what this is showing you here. For those people asking, you know, should I go with the 32 transducer if I can find it on sale for around that thousand dollar price point and then go with a nine inch screen? It's a great combo. I used it on my boat and ice fishing for a number of years. Um, it's probably the hottest selling combo that Garmin has. And this new Gen 2 screen has actually got the same screen resolution as a bigger screen like this. This is the GPS map 1042 XSV. And it's got the exact same screen resolution for their second gen units. The Garmin Echo Map, the Gen 1s, um, they have slightly lower resolution. So if, if you're between getting a a first generation echo map with maybe that GT54 transducer package and then the live scope screen. Um, still a great option if you want an all water package for side view, down view, uh, 2D sonar, and then be able to link it up with your live scope unit. But if you're looking for more of a designated screen and you, something that doesn't want to break the bank, I highly recommend this Garmin Echo Map UHD2 screen. Same resolution as these bigger 10 inch screens. As, my two. as you can see, we're starting to get out. Once we get out to like the 50, 55, this LVS32 transducer, it starts to get, you know, the shallower water kind of hurts it. I might go out to some deeper water here in like 20 feet. We'll show you a little bit of a difference, but um, 50, 55 is where it starts to kind of lose its strength a little bit. Once we get out to like 70, 75, that's probably the limit where you're gonna be able to see a decent amount of fish or your lure once we get out to 100. Now you can see a big school of crappie out here at 100 feet. 
but if you're looking for a single crappie at 100 feet with the LVS 32, that might be a little bit difficult. You can see there are some fish right here at about 60 feet. And zoom in. There's a fish here coming through. Um, there are fish moving on the bottom here, but there's the LVS 32 transducer. Now I'm going to switch over and rig up the LVS 34, the LiveScope Plus transducer. I'm going to show you both on the big 10 inch screen and on this 9 inch screen. So swapped over to the LVS 34 transducer. A lot clearer of a picture. There is, uh, there's my, my minnow and jig with a little weight on it right here, 30 feet out. I bumped this one out. 65 feet, that's that uh, lipless crankbait with a little big weight on it. But that LVS 34, I can really push the limit. You can see it's a lot clearer out to further distance. There's a fish coming in on the far right. You can see there's fish, fish right here. I'm at 100 feet. I mean, that's really the biggest difference with the LVS 34 is you're going to get a lot clearer of a picture further out. Um, again, those are my two jigs. You can actually see some of the slush over the holes that I drilled. So I got a minnow and a jig set up. It's about 28 feet. It kind of, it's swimming around, so it's a little bit difficult to pick up. So the one thing I will mention on probably both the LVS 32 and the LVS 34, I'm on a river right now. And so there's a lot of current moving through where I'm set up, um, which creates a lot of sediment, a lot, pushing a lot of sediment through that current. So the screen isn't gonna look as clear as if I were fishing a lake or any place with less current. Um, I wanted to fish this spot for walleye, so I figured I'd do this video here and then go fish for some walleye. But there's actually some fish on the bottom about 30 feet out, you can see them kicking. My minnow is pretty close to that. There's the minnow right there. It's about 10 feet down and 28 feet out. Now, this is a 16th ounce jig with uh, just about a, I don't know, two inch crappie minnow on it. Um, but you can see there's some fish moving through there on the top of the water column and on the bottom of the water column there, right on the bottom. There's a fish coming up about 25 feet. Where the 32, you're gonna see here, it starts to get kind of fuzzy. I tried my best to film. I got a lipless crankbait at about 55 to 60 feet out. That's pretty much the limit that I've seen with the LVS 32. You could probably push it to 70, but after that, it's going to be really difficult to see a lure, especially in shallow water. Once you get out to maybe 25 to 30 feet, it might get a little easier to push the limits of this forward facing sonar to 70, 80 feet or 100 feet. But you're not going to get the clarity that you're going to get with the LVS 34. Uh, that we're about to show you right now. When you first connect it out of the box, you do got to make some adjustments. I personally don't like the grid setup. Some people do. I, I don't, so I turn that off. And then I do have to uh, make some small adjustments to the game. So the reason, one of the reasons I like these bigger 10-inch screens, it's got this quick toggle button. And on the bottom here, it's kind of hard to see, but right now it's set up for forward, forward range, so I can quick toggle in and out. Um, if I push it one time, it goes to my gain setting. So I can turn my gain down or up. I'm going to turn it to about that, 66. Um, and then my depth range. Um, this goes up and down by 10 feet, but if I want to go smaller, I can just do smaller increments. There we go. But there is, right there, is uh, the first lure or the first jig head with the weight on it and then at 65 feet I mean you can just tell already this image is just so much clearer with this LiveScope Plus transducer so one of the main reasons I love the GPS map units is because I actually film on YouTube so you can actually go to your active captain screen here and I can go to my helm setting and this allows me to record directly to the screen um, so I'm not actually having to use the big camera to try to you know get you can see here I got some screen glare right there I can record directly to the screen um, and actually this setup right here I can actually use a touch screen setting to adjust my settings on the live scope itself 
but uh, you know, considering both the Gen 2 Echo Map and this GPS Map 1042 XSV had the same exact screen resolution, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to see some sort of drastic clarity between them. Um, I just prefer the GPS Map units because I film on YouTube. It's a lot easier to record the screen to show you exactly what I'm seeing on the screen without any sun glare. Um, I'd recommend both units if you're trying to, I guess, I think this is around $1,300, so you're going to spend two to $300 more than the Gen 2 Echo Map units if you wanted to get this LiveScope Plus bundle. Again, the regular LiveScope is still a great option. Um, you're still going to be able to find crappie for those crappie fishermen that watch my channel. Uh, especially when this thing goes on sale for about a thousand bucks like it has been pretty much the past three springs that's been going on sale. Um, I would not be afraid to pick this up with even an older uh, first gen Garmin Echo Map unit. You're going to be able to find fish, have fun using it. And the cool thing about a lot of this stuff, it, it tends to hold its resale value. Some of these newer, newer scope units. So um, this right here, the LVS32, it's got the single cable. And if you buy this right now, let's say you, you bought it for a thousand bucks, you used it for a year, and then you wanted to up the LiveScope Plus. These single cables with the black box, so if you're selling it as a package, typically you can sell it for around 700 bucks, give or take a hundred bucks on Facebook or Craigslist or something. Um, and that way you're only spending, you know, a thousand dollars on the LiveScope Plus box. So, and if you wanted to upgrade screens at some point, these Garmin Echo Map units, typically you can sell them for probably, again, 600 to 900, depending on how old they are. And if they come with a regular transducer, and I'm talking a side imaging, down view, transducer type of deal. Um, so, you know, these do hold sale value within the first probably three, four years. After about three or four years, they do start to go down. All right, so there you have it. Kind of the, the biggest difference is clarity at range. Once we start pushing them past that 60 to 70 foot mark, the LVS32, which is the first generation live scope, just doesn't quite have the clarity to really push past that. There's nothing wrong with the 32. A lot of guys, including myself, have used it to catch a ton of crappie, um, basically since it came out in 2018, 2019. So if you're looking for a budget package, the LVS32, I don't know if it's on sale right now, but typically in the past, it goes on sale for about $1,000, That the, the transducer and the black box. And then I think there's some sales going on with the first generation Garmin Echo Map units. You'd probably pick them up for like 750 bucks. So, you know, if you total package $1,700, if you just really wanted to get into the live scope market, um, if you're looking at better screen quality, these the Gen 2 Echo Map units, uh, and I've done a, a little bit of a series on this open water with this Gen 2 unit. Screen quality is the same as these bigger 10 inch screens for the GPS map family of units. I would highly recommend the Gen 2. If you want to be able to record your screen or have a little bit easier manipulating settings on the fly, these GPS map units, specifically with the toggle button, I recommend them. And if you want to film your own YouTube videos or you just want to post maybe your live scope stuff to social media, the GPS map family of units is the only family of units that you can use the Echo Map screen, or that you can use your Active Captain screen on your phone app and actually record your live scope. Unfortunately, the Garmin Echo Map and the Echo Map Ultra family of units, you can't do that with your Active Captain app. There you have it. Comparison of the Live Scope Plus versus the original Live Scope. Biggest difference is clarity at distant. I'll leave a link to a bunch of different packages in the video description below, kind of mixing and matching price points. Uh, appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. These questions, that are the, the reason for doing this video is because I got questions on Facebook, so feel free to message me on either Facebook or Instagram if you got any questions on purchasing any of these fish finders or these transducers.